Welcome to Season 5 of the Agile Brand with Greg Kilstrom, where we talk with enterprise and technology platform leaders about the people, processes, and platforms that make marketing and customer experience successful, scalable, and sustainable. This is what creates an Agile brand. I'm your host, Greg Kilstrom advisor and consultant for Fortune 1000 marketing and CX leaders and teams as principal and chief strategist at GK5A and best-selling author, keynote speaker, entrepreneur, and Agile certified coach. The Agile Brand Podcast is brought to you by Tech Systems, an industry leader in full stack technology services, talent services, and real world application. For more information, go to teksystems.com. To sign up for the Agile Brand newsletter and get the latest insights and articles on marketing technology and CX, or to purchase a copy of my latest book, House of the Customer, go to gregkillstrom.com. You can also find all my books on Amazon and other retailers. And now on to the show. I'm excited to bring you the latest in a multi-part series sponsored by Contrast & Co., an award-winning brand strategy and marketing communications agency determined to build the most strikingly different brand experiences anywhere. Today, we're going to talk about creating a strikingly different brand, why it's so important, as well as the cost of inauthenticity in branding. To help me discuss this topic, I'd like to welcome Dharma Packner, founder and chief creative officer at Contrast & Co. Dharma, welcome to the show. Greg, thank you. Welcome. I'm, I'm, it's great to be back. Uh, it, time moves so fast. I uh, I can't remember. I think we spoke maybe about six months or so. It's a, it's crazy how fast we're moving into winter. But uh, but I'm extraordinarily excited to be here again and and continue our conversation. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, glad glad to have you back on the show. And uh, you know, for those that did miss our our previous conversation, why don't we start with you giving just a little background on yourself as well as uh, your agency, Contrast and Co. Sure, absolutely. I am the uh, founder and creative director of a brand strategy and design consultancy uh, named Contrasting Company. At the core, we're, we're built. We're an agency predicated on the idea that that what makes you different is what makes you effective. Uh, and from a brand perspective, we look to build strikingly different brand experiences in whatever categories or industries we enter. Great. So yeah, let's let's dive in here and and talk about you know what, what exactly makes a, a strikingly different brand. So you know first to to start you know how does an organization go about creating a, a strikingly different brand and you know what are, what are some of the most critical steps in doing so? Sure. No, great question. I think there's you know there's challenges in, a, across the board. I think and I alluded to it earlier in this idea that it it is truly different. It, it is very extraordinarily difficult. To truly differentiate your space in most in most of the categories that in which we work, um, and we had talked about this idea of how you can be strikingly different and and how you can sort of lean into your unique differentiators. And the th- the thing from a branding perspective is if you're starting with a, the conversation with logos and colors and typography, you're missing the point. Like if you're starting a rebrand conversation with 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 talk about responsive design or social posts or PowerPoint decks, um, you're, you're missing the point. All of these things are extraordinarily valuable and important and key deliverables along the way. But I think to really be different, to truly kind of stand out in whatever space you're in, it has to start first and foremost with like, we're truly understanding who you are as an organization, like understanding like what you value and understanding what you can honestly claim and, and, and profess to deliver. And that, that sounds deceptively simple, but like, but that's not an, that's not an easy thing for any organization to do or in an organization or an individual. Like, like for example, I'm, I'm 52 years old and I'm just kind of finding out that for myself now. So I think we like, we go through the discovery process quite a bit and I'm always amazed to find out how, or to, to, to learn how many organizations don't have direct answers to, to the questions around what it is that makes them unique. So I think that's the foundation of being strikingly different is like truly understanding who you are and what you value. Like if you don't build a brand on that type of foundation or without that type of foundation, I think that's long term how brands can run into challenges. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, what what got you thinking about this? You know, you you alluded to having an experience that, that got you thinking about it. So, you know, what? what kind of led you to this, uh, this concept of, of strikingly different? 
Well, so with two things, uh, two experiences, actually. One is a book I was reading. Um, from time to time, we have clients recommend books to us. And, and one of our clients recommended a, a book. And it's a wonderful book on branding, if you haven't read it. Uh, it's called Friction, Passion Brands in the Era of Disruption, written by Jeff Rosenblum and, and Jordan Burke. A client had strongly recommended the book to us, so I, I read it, and I, I absolutely loved it. And at the core of it, the basic concept of this book was like this idea of friction, and that's the feeling when a brand creates a dissonance between between what they promise and, and what they actually deliver. And it's one of those things that you know it, but it, it, once you see it, it's hard to unsee. And like, and I, recently I had an experience recently, I guess about a year or so ago, I had an experience with my with my banking institution, and they were like they have a major presence in the D.C. metro area. You see their commercials, you see their building, you see their offices, you see their presence er everywhere. I had an issue with them as a customer from a, from a brand banking perspective, and it was absolutely impossible to get it solved. Like it was impossible to speak to a person. I was having redundant conversations with people. I was being pointed in every single possible direction, but a solution. And at the same time, I'm seeing commercials on TV with like celebrities and I'm seeing social blog posts that celebrate their technology and employees and celebrate everything but what I as a client or as a customer actually need. And then from a, from a brand perspective, that makes me question things. I'm like, why am I seeing a celebrity spokesperson when I can't get somebody on the help desk? Or like, why does my bank have an arena? How does that arena translate into a better banking experience for me as a, as a client? So like at its core, like that's the idea of friction. And I think to me, friction is a representation of branding and marketing and at its very worst. It's like when a brand promises one thing and, and delivers something completely different. So I think as a result of just kind of reading that book and then having that experience, it's just reinforced to me just kind of how critically important it is for brands to like promise or to, to understand what it is they're delivering and then create experiences that actually deliver on their promise. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I definitely have had my share of, uh, I'm happy with my bank now, but I have, uh, ha had my share of, of banking specific, um, challenges. And I, I'm, I might even know the, the bank that you're referring to there, but, um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, how can, how can brands then go about, creating this this friction-free experience? Well, the, I don't know if you can create a friction-free experience. I think it's more of a pursuit than a, than an actual outcome. But I certainly think you can aim for, for less friction in general with, with brands. And I think, again, it probably goes back to this idea of being authentic. And I know that's like an overused buzzword in branding, but it's kind of true. It's like being authentic means you truly understand what you are and you, you understand what you value. So so if you say your brand promises exceptional customer service, then, well, how do you define exceptional customer service? Like, what does that look like? Like, how do you deliver it? Like, how do you measure it? How do you institutionalize it? How do you make it part of employee behavior? And then, like, what are you willing to sacrifice for it? So I think it's like, it goes back to, like, truly understanding, like, what are you promising to people? And then when you define these differentiators, brands should be able to hold a mirror up to themselves and say, are the things we're defining about ourselves, are these things true? Like if we're promising this from a customer service perspective, are we making sure that every aspect of our organization is designed to reflect that and support that? So like, and I'm talking about banking specifically, but like it could be anything. Like if you're defining the value proposition of your cybersecurity platform, like the same thinking applies. Like what do your customers need? What are, you, what are you promising them from a technology perspective or a service perspective? And what does that actual experience feel like? And I think the more aligned those things become, the better the brand experience we get, the better the brand experience can be. So, so I think to answer your question, how do you go about creating friction-free experiences? It, it begins by kind of truly understanding what it is you value. Like that's the base. Before we continue, I'd like to introduce you to a sponsor of the show, Partner Hero. Customer service outsourcing has long been available mainly to large enterprise businesses with long-term contracts and onerous procurement processes. Partner Hero is challenging business as usual and bringing the benefits of outsourcing to small and medium businesses as well as startups. With short, flexible contracts and fast ramp-up times, Partner Hero is making customer support outsourcing a viable option for small and medium businesses and startups. 
It's perfect for companies with seasonality expecting a temporary spike in volume or that simply need to scale up. And their focus on quality means your customers will get an experience that feels like it comes from your team. If you're ready to bring in outside customer support help for your company that feels like it's part of your existing team, check out Partner Hero. Head on over to partnerhero.com slash agile, that's partnerhero.com slash A-G-I-L-E, to book a free consultation with their solutions team. Mention you heard about Partner Hero from the Agile brand and the way of the setup fee. Now let's get back to the show. And so, you know, for this to be, uh, you know, I, I think there's a lot of brands, uh, a lot of organizations out there that say, you know, we love our customers and customer experiences is, is super important to us. And, you know, it's it's things that are put in PowerPoints and set at, at meetings and, and things like that. But, you know, the, the real where it really matters is, you know, if if they act on it. But I think in order to act on it, it's got to matter to there, there has to be real impacts to the business if they don't have a good experience and you know they need to be able to tangibly see that so you know what do, what do you think it costs an organization when their brand and, and values are not aligned you know i think it depends on a lot of different factors but in some cases it's incalculable like for for example like let's go back to this bank example like i'm stuck from the time being using them i've got all you know everything sort of set up um, and like from the outside, like our relationship looks pretty successful, but like, but as a cl- customer, as a client, like I have zero goodwill towards them. And every time I see their marketing, I think to myself, well, well, that's not true at all. Like I'm experiencing your brand and it doesn't feel at all like this, this, this piece of, you know, collateral I got in the mail. So like, I won't recommend them. I won't actively seek them out. And like, if anyone asks me about uh, like, what it is to bank with them? I'll be extraordinarily honest. So they have a client, but but they haven't created a passion brand. Like I'm a captive client. And I think it speaks to me to this bigger challenge of like a lot of times with brand and marketing there, rather than trying to like build the existing relationships, they're trying to grow new ones. And I think that's a very short-sighted approach. So again, going back to like when you create this dissonance, like when you when people expect a certain type of experience and you deliver something different to them, that's a challenging thing to have. And I think what happens is you stack up enough of these frictions over and over and over again, you lose the passion behind the brand. And then after you lose the passion, you don't start trusting the organization. Like you don't, you know, you don't trust people that don't stick to their work. Your, their work. You're not going to trust an organization that doesn't stick to theirs. So, so I think that's why it matters. I think like trust is everything with branding. Like without trust, it's it's harder, I think, for brands to continue and grow in a truly long-term successful way. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think you're definitely uh, describing the uh, you know I, as as you said, inauthentic. Um, you know, it's certainly it's certainly used a lot, but it doesn't mean it's not true, right? But um, you know, that it's certainly I think you're describing the the challenge with with being inauthentic. What, what's the bigger opportunity here? Well, I think, you know, obviously like defining, uh, defining what makes you different and what you value and how your, how your product or how your service is embodied in that is, is critical. But I think the real opportunity is we're entering, we're in an era where that matters, where, where people align themselves with organizations they value, like they choose organizations and they stay with organizations and they recommend organizations and they swear by organizations and they put bumper stickers of organizations of brands that reflect their mindset or that reflect their purpose, like brands that are able to ladder up to a bigger idea or a bigger, a bigger picture concept. Like those are, those are the brands that I think it like create like true passionate relationships when you can get that type of alignment. And I think when you get that type of alignment between what you promise and what you deliver, you can create a relationship that transcends your products and services, I think. And you can you can create a platform that I think allows for when you have that kind of trust, you can create a platform that I think allows for, for really true leadership in, 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 in everything, really. Yeah, yeah. Can you give an example of, you know, what, what does this look like when an organization does this? So there's a lot of different forms it could take um, and there's a lot of different approaches, but I think at its core, it's like define your vision for the world and then like live that vision, like, but truly live that vision. So like, I'll give you an example and, and I'll use Starbucks as an example. So like, I'm definitely a coffee shop person. I spend an extraordinary amount of time and money at Starbucks. I love the experience there. 
But it's one of those things that it definitely introduces friction. So like you go to their website and look at their look at their commitment to envir- the environment and sustainability and, and conservation, all these different things, and, and you're inspired. There's a sense of commitment. But then you walk over to the recycling bin in any store and there's there's a lack of great signage. It doesn't look like anybody really cares, even though there's promotional signage everywhere else around the store. There's no sign is designed to teach inc- or to encourage good sort of behaviors environmentally. So it's one of these things where like they're a thirty-two billion dollar company. They could reinvent re- they could reinvent recycling, or they could be doing all these things behind the scenes. But like from a customer perspective today, there's no evidence of any of that stuff. So again, it's that first thought, first and foremost, it's this friction where the experience on the brand says one thing, but the experience when you actually see it says something different. But I think like, think of the opportunity, like imagine like if an organization like Starbucks with the resources they have behind them was able to like take the vision statements that they've put together on their website and physically express that at every single opportunity, like in every single touch point, like if brands were able to like live up and organizations were able to live up to their brand and marketing promises and use those brand and marketing promises as the benchmark for the experiences and the services they deliver. I think I think that would be extraordinarily powerful. So again, I'm using Starbucks as an example, but like first and foremost, like trying to find like Make sure you're living up to the values you profess and then really make sure you're like you're using those values to continue to propel the organization forward, the organization and the brand forward. Yeah. Yeah. So those, I think that was a good example. And definitely, uh, you know, now, now that you mentioned that, I, I, I noticed the, the recycling thing. And uh, so it's, it's interesting to, to hear that perspective. Who's doing this well, though? Um, there's, uh, there's a million, uh, well, not a million, I should say, but uh, there's, there's organizations out there that I think do, I think for me, the, the company, and this one was referenced in the book friction, but over and over again, is Patagonia, like Patagonia, 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 like everything about this organization and how they operate to me is a reflection of that. Like you go to their website right after there's two buttons and activism is number two. And like, it gets into specifically, like they talk about how they partner or how they're creating activists or how they're taxing themselves or how they're connecting groups together. But every single thing this organization does, at least both on the, both on the inside and the outside sort of is a reflection of what they value, which is this complete dedication to the planet. So it's one of those things where, like they're an exceptional organization doing the exceptional number of things that align with what they promise. And I understand like, you know, that everybody's not Patagonian, not all organizations have, you know, have the, the resources to, to, to be that necessarily mission focused or, or altruistic. But like, from my perspective, it's really refreshing to see an organization at that scale walking the walk. And, you know, I think more than ever, like, we need leaders like the, the, the world needs leaders. And I think like for brands to take a true leadership position, to pick a stance that they that they truly believe in and, and want to represent. And then they shift everything they do towards towards that vision. I think that's very powerful. And I think they set an extraordinary example for other organizations everywhere to to hopefully follow in their footsteps. Yeah, yeah, d- definitely agree. Well, Dharma, it's been great chatting with you today glad to have you back on the show one last question before we wrap things up here what's a first step that someone could take to you know create a strikingly different brand well there's there's a lot of different things to consider but i think the most important thing is like start off by being different like like whatever space you're going to go into like bring something new to the table like whether you're bringing a new product a new mindset a new approach a new methodology a new whatever but don't just join the fray, like have a unique take on whatever it is you offer, like find the specific area or the specific focus in which you want to be exceptional and make sure you kind of carve out your footprint there. So I think first and foremost is like, make sure you are different, like make sure you're delivering something that's unique and, and necessary in the space. And then I think it's, again, going back to like really understanding like what it is you value and then make sure that every part of your experience, whether it's the marketing experience or the customer experience, like make sure those things align. The further those ideas are aligned and the more aligned they are, the further a brand will go. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, again, I'd like to thank Dharma Packner, founder and chief creative officer at Contrast and Company for joining the show. And thanks to Contrast and Company for sponsoring this episode. You can learn more about Dharma and Contrast and Company by following the links in the show notes. Thanks for having me, Greg. And uh, I look forward to talking to you again. Yeah, great to have you back. Thanks. Thanks again for listening to the Agile Brand with Greg Kilstrom podcast, brought to you by Tech Systems. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to subscribe on your podcast channel of choice and leave us a rating so that others can find the show more easily. You can access more episodes of the show at www.gregkilstrom.com. That's G-R-E-G-K-I-H-L-S-T-R-O-M.com. To get a copy of my latest book, House of the Customer, visit my website or you can find it on Amazon or other retailers. The Agile brand is produced by Missing Link a Latina-owned, strategy-driven, creatively-fueled production co-op. From ideation to creation, they craft human connections through intelligent, engaging, and informative content. Until next time, stay agile.